أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واصطنعتك لنفسي اذهب أنت وأخوك بآياتي ولا تنيا في ذكري اذهبا إلى فرعون إنه طغى فقولا له قولا لينا لعله يتذكر أو يخشى قالا ربنا إننا نخاف أن يفرط علينا أو أن يطغى قال لا تخافا إنني معكما أسمع وأرى فأتياه فقولا إنا رسولا ربك فأرسل معنا بني إسرائيل فأرسل معنا بني إسرائيل ولا تعذبهم قد جئناك بآية من ربك والسلام على من Salakallahu'l-Azim. These are ayat from Surah Taha, beginning from the ayah number 41 till the ayah number 47. <coughs> Actually, we are talking about Musa alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanding him, he is speaking him in these ayat. And it started from the previous page and it is long a little bit Allah here says to Musa in the ayah number 41 and I have made you and I have chosen you and I have selected you for myself you are for myself meaning I liked you I liked your behavior till today you trusted me very well you treated very well you are one of the good doers and maybe most beautiful one of them at that time so I have chosen you for myself remember some, I remember somewhere else in Quran Allah says maybe in Surah Qasas and when he attained his uh, strength Ashuddahu he perfected in his creation and in manhood meaning when he become a man وَلَمَّا بَلَغَ أَشُدَّهُ an adult وَاسْتَوَى آتَيْنَاهُ حُكْمًا وَعِلْمًا when he become uh, after his childhood maybe around 20 or maybe more than that Allah says we had given him a judgment وعلمًا and a knowledge so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of that ayah says وَكَذَلِكَ نَجْزِلْ مُحْسِنِينَ and thus we reward the good doers. So Musa alayhi salam, rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, select, he was selected by Allah the Almighty. Allah said to him, وَاسْطَنَعَتُكَ لِنَفْسِي And I have chosen you for myself. And there is a reason behind this choice. Musa alayhi salam, one of the good doers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala liked him and liked his life and liked his actions in his life how he invoked Allah the Almighty his supplications 
وَاسْتَنَعْتُكَ لِنَفْسِي And I have selected you for myself. Meaning as a messenger. You will be my messenger to Fir'aun and to his chiefs and to that society. Allah says, اِذْهَبْ أَنْتَ وَأَخُوكَ Now he says, go you and your brother. In the ayah number 24, Allah asked him to go ila Fir'aun alone. He said, اِذْهَبْ ila Fir'aun إِنَّهُ طَغَى But after Musa asked Allah for a helper from his family, actually his brother Harun, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him his request and now he says, go you and your brother. اِذْهَبْ أَنْتَ وَأَخُوكَ بِآيَاتِ Go you and your brother. I have accepted your request. As Allah said, قَالَ سَنَشُدُّ عَضُدَكَ بِأَخِيكَ وَنَجْعَلْ لَكُمَا سُلْطَانَ We shall strengthen your arm with your brother Harun. So go you and your brother both بِآيَاتِي with my signs وَلَا تَنِيَا فِي ذِكْرِي Allah saying to them and do not slacken do not become weak in my remembrance وَلَا تَنِيَا فِي ذِكْرِي Allah the Almighty warning them about his remembrance you may remember Musa alayhi salam when he asked Allah for a helper from his family, Harun, his brother, he said that كَسِيرًا So we can glorify you much وَنَذْكُرَكَ كَثِيرًا And we can remember you much We can وَنَذْكُرَكَ كَثِيرًا We can mention you, each other, much Allah here says وَلَا تَنِيَا فِي ذِكْرِ So this issue is important. Musa alayhi salam said we shall remember you much and Allah says do not slacken in my remembrance. Do not, do not become weak in my remembrance. And you may remember the ayah number 14 when Allah the Almighty started to speak to Musa. He said وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِ and perform salah for my remembrance. So if you gather these ayat, you will understand that Allah says to Musa, perform salah and be careful about performing salah. Do not slacken, do not become weak in performing salah. Give importance to that issue because salah is for my remembrance. وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِي Perform salah for my remembrance. So the remembrance of Allah is important. Although Musa alayhi salam says, give me my brother so we can remember you much. Allah granted him his brother and now he is repeating him and warning him not to slacken and not become weak in his remembrance. So we can draw the lesson from this ayat that remembering of Allah, so the salah is very important in sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should be serious in that issue because it relates to remembering Allah. It's not something simple. Salah makes us, cause us to remember Allah Azza wa Jal. Because when we forget Him, we, feel we shall forget ourselves. Those who for, uh, did forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, actually Allah the Almighty made them forget themselves. So when you forget yourselves, you will lose the meaning of this life, you will lose whatever you have and then at the end you, you shall lose the chance of the everlasting life. So remembering is very very important issue in Quran and the revelation of Allah and everything 
leads you to remember to remember the truth and Allah is the truth Allah is Al-Haqq He is the main truth everything depends on Him if there is no Allah then there would be nothing Who, because He is a summit He is the real and the soul power and creator behind everything he is the real truth he is the real answer for everything in this universe if you say if you if you recite your questions why this why that why this the main and the sole answer is Allah he created them he prepared them each for its purpose Allah so when you remember Allah you shall be aware about the answer for every question and nothing shall be meaningless in your life so Salah is very very important in our life when Allah the Almighty is sending Musa السلام, to Fir'aun he is warning him be sure to be serious about Salah about remembering me if you remember me if you do not forget me then you shall not fail in anything اذهب إلى فر اذهب أنت وأخوك بآياتي ولا تنيا في ذكري سبحان الله this is the prophet Musa عليه السلام the messenger Musa عليه السلام one of the five biggest messengers Allah warning him not to be slackened in remembering Allah عز وجل and you may remember if you read Quran that the hypocrites they are the ones who slacken in performing salah and they do not remember Allah much Allah says يُرَاؤُونَ النَّاسَ وَلَا يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا they show off the people and they do not وَإِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ قَامُوا كُسَالًا and whenever they come to salah they stand for salah they stand lazily يُرَاؤُونَ النَّاسَ in reality they are shoving off to the people ولا يذكرون الله إلا قليلا and they do not remember Allah only a little but a little so this is one of the sign the signs of uh, the hypocrites we should keep ourselves away from this sign we should be serious about remembering Allah Azza wa Jal Salah should be main agenda in our daily life we should not give up from Salah because it relates us to Allah the Almighty to the truth it is remembering Allah Azza wa Jal Allah says وَلَا ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرْ remembering Allah is the biggest the greatest issue this is the main thing which we should not give up in our life performing Salah here Musa السلام, going to Fir'aun very heavy task very important Allah says do not slacken in remembering Allah in remembering me meaning you shall receive whatever you need your confidence your tranquility your trust everything from Salah Salah will guard you إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر وإذا ذكرت ربك في القرآن ولوا على أدبارهم نفورا الصلاة performing الصلاة prayer will guard you against شيطان and against his whispers will lead you to the truth حافظوا على الصلوات you should guard your prayer your prayers your salah you should be very careful about them and they shall 
guard you against evils, against sins. Allah says, وَاسْتَعِينُهُ بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ Seek patient, seek strength, firm from patience and salah. Patient and salah, together, both of them uh, is needed for the believer. Every believer should have both of them. وَاسْتَعِينُهُ بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ وَإِنَّا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ These may be very difficult, but for those who do not have fear of their Creator, if you have, if we have the fear of our Creator, if we have our respect towards Him in our heart, then it will not be difficult for us. وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَشَعِينَ So it's very big lesson from this ayah, ayah number 42, that Allah, the Almighty, sending Musa السلام, to Fir'aun with his brother, and they are, they shall fulfill very, very important uh, task. They will uh, go to the most powerful king at that time and they will warn him they will say you're just a man you have to worship the creator the creator deserves to be worshipped only alone they shall say this reality to him but Allah says Allah do not tolerance the salah, the remembering of Allah some believers when they do some good deeds maybe serious deeds important Satan comes to them and say salah you may perform salah after a while you have right now very important very serious issue very serious job about your religion this is your duty so you commit you you fulfill many important things about your religion so you may delay your salah delay your remembering Allah this is from shaitan we do not have anything more important more than salah Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded his companions to go and pr to go uh, to people of the Bani Quraida actually they are Jews Allah the Prophet of Allah sent sent them to that place and said لا يصلينا أحدكم العصر إلا في Bani Quraida none should pray the Asr Salat al-Asr except in that place in Bani Quraida some people in the way they said we should pray Salat al-Asr or Salat is more important and Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him didn't say that ex but only to inform us that how this is important and this is, he didn't forbid us from salah. He just wanted us to hasten to this issue. Some of them prayed in the way. And Prophet Muhammad وسلم, didn't blame them. Didn't say anything to them. Salah is very, very important. And you should know that there was a time for them when they reached that place to pray Salat al-Asr there was a time, enough time but they preferred to pray at the, at the very time, at exactly time at the first time of that Salah look how they give importance to this issue here is Musa alayhi salam and going to Mu and going to Fir'aun but Allah warning him 
Wala tanya fi dhikri. You both do not slacken in my remembrance. Idhaba ila fir'auna innahu ta'a. You both, both of you, go to Pharaoh, go to Fir'aun. Innahu Tava, verily, he has transgressed. He became a, a tyrant, an insolent, an holy. Innahu Tava, an arrogant. Go to Fir'aun. He has forgotten his Lord. He disobeyed him. Now you, ha you have to go to him and remind him. إِذْهَبَا إِلَىٰ فِرَعَوْنَ إِنَّهُ طَغَىٰ So you see that Fir'aun is one of the biggest tyrant lived on the surface of this earth but Allah do not cause him to death before warning him and here he is commanding Musa السلام, to go to Fir'aun and remind him and warn him ila innahu tawa. so you, you, we can understand that if Allah didn't neglect Fir'aun from warning him then he would not for, uh, forget or neglect anyone surely he will warn all of them he will not perish any of them without warning your lord would not perish some people without sending them a messenger while they are in a state of heedlessness it's unconceivable about Allah the Almighty he warns them very very clearly and again and again and again after a while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stops sending him his uh, signs and his evidence and his proofs and that's the time of death idhaba ila fir'aun innahu tawa go you both of you to fir'aun innahu tawa faqula lahu and there speak to him you both speak to him qawlan layyan mildly soft and gentle you should not be harsh when you speak to him this is like the ayah Allah says ud'u ila sabil rabbika bil hikmati wal mawidati al hasana invite to the path of your lord ud'u ila sabil rabbika bil hikmah with wisdom الحسنة, and beautiful admonition beautiful advice good advice you have to be kind you have to be gentle and soft Allah says to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu by the mercy of your Lord you lean them ولو كنت فضا, if you were harsh غليظ القلب and uh, very strong heart heart لنفضوا من حولك then they would scatter from around you you would not be able to gather them around you but by the mercy of your Lord you lean them so to be soft is very important when you call someone to your Lord. This is very important, especially in the West. Some people, when they try to call, try to share something 
about their religion with the Western people, they, some of them, they behave harshly with them. And they think within themselves, I'm explaining the truth, he should listen, is on falsehood. So I have to warn him harshly. This is my right and I should represent my religion. Uh, and the strength of my religion and, and show him the truth and say this is the truth I should not I don't, I, I don't have to listen to you because you are unfalse your religion is false and your way of life is false but you have to listen to me and I'm representing the truth look at me sit and sit down and listen to me this is not the case which Allah Azza wa Jal wants us to follow this is not the way that Allah Azza wa Jal wants us to follow here as Musa alayhi salam as a messenger of Allah one of the biggest messengers who is very close to Allah. Allah said about him, وَكَانَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَجِيهًا He was honored in the sight of Allah, in the presence of Allah, the Almighty. One of the beloved Prophet, whom Allah mentioned in Quran in many places. Some scholar said that كَادَ الْقُرْآنُ أَنْ يَكُونَ مُوسَى Quran was about, Quran was going to be about to be Musa. Everywhere you can find Musa salam. Look how, how he is important. And his interlocutor is Fir'aun. One of the most evil person lived on this earth who said, Ana rabbukum al -a'la. I am your Lord. I am your highest Lord. He said, "Ma alim tulakum min ilahin ghairi." I don't know any deity for you other than me. I am your Lord. I am your God. Ana rabbukum ala. But look, Allah Azza wa Jalla, warning His Messenger when He is sending him to Musa alayhi salam. Actually, he warned them both with Mus with Harun alayhi salam. Qula, you both should speak mildly. Fakula lahu qawlan layinan. You cannot be harsh. If Musa alayhi salam, if Harun alayhi salam, commanded by Allah azza wa jal to be soft, and for such a man like Pharaoh, then you cannot find a man or a woman in the West more evil than Pharaoh, and you are not more good, better than Musa salam, or Harun salam. You cannot find anyone more evil than Pharaoh. So they need to be soft more than Pharaoh. And you have to be gentle you have to be soft more than Musa salam, because you are not good like him Allah will not tolerate you when you speak with someone an evil man you are not better than him as Musa salam, was better than Firaun you have many sins you did many evils so we have to take the lesson from the commandment of Allah here. Qula lahu qawlan You both should speak with him mildly. Say something soft to him. Qula lahu qawlan This is the main issue in da'wah, in tabligh. We cannot use, even we cannot use the word in a manner 
in a way that it seems to be normal but it hurts the interlocutor it hurts the person who is before us whom we are talked to we have not we have not that right we should be sincerely soft gentle we are sharing we are delivering the message of their creator Allah the creator of the heavens and the earth is not just our Lord he is their creator also he is their Lord we should say to them our deity our God and your God is just the same one is one no deity other than him worthy of worship so we have to share this beautiful message with them mildly and in tranquility without hastening upon them without making the world narrow to them without making it difficult to them we should be confident and we should be relaxed and easy when we speak to them we should have give them time to understand to realize we should not say tomorrow I'm giving this uh, Quran to you and you tomorrow you, you have to be a mu'min a believer a Muslim no give him time Allah says to the Prophet Muhammad وَإِنْ أَحَدٌ مِّنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ اسْتَجَارَكَ فَأَجِرْهُ حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ Allah. If one of them, one of the polytheists, asked you for a time, then give him a time. Give him time. Let him listen to the word of Allah Azza wa Jal. We, can, we have not that right to coerce them. No one can be a believer with coercion they may be hypocrites and we do not like them to be hypocrites let them kuffar let them non-believers better than this uh, hypocrites they should not be coerced and most importantly we should not start to speak and say I'm representing the truth and I am very certain I will listen to you but only to show my respect I am very certain about my belief if you follow this way then he will, he will follow the same way about his religion if you are certain about the truth and that what you have is the truth then you have to say if you bring me something contains more truth than what I had than what I have mine what is mine I'm ready to follow your truth this is one of the commandment of Allah Azza wa Jal in Quran he says قُلْ فَأْتُوا بِكِتَابٍ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ هُوَ أَهْدَى Say to them, bring a book from the only one God, the creator of the heavens and earth, contains more guidance, then I will follow it. I'm ready to follow it. When we will say this statement, we sh shall not say it without believing in it we should say sincerely and believing in it we should be ready if I see a truth and I am convinced with it then I will follow it Allah my creator has given me faculties and abilities and I have to be I have to follow them sincerely. I cannot remain the truth 
and follow something else. This is our way. We are the believers as Allah defined us they are the ones who listen to the word regardless who says that word they listen and they read every book and they listen every word but they follow the best thereof this is the principle of the believers Allah guides such people so we have to be sincere with them, we have to listen to them very carefully and we have to analyze and try to understand if it was the truth. If we did not convince by them, then we should explain to them our understanding, our opinion. Then Allah Azza wa Jal, then we should, we should hope from Allah to guide him as he guided us and we should ask him to guide us more than yesterday to increase our guide, guidance this is the way of Hidayah otherwise we uh, we shall put ourselves in risk to lose that guidance we cannot be arrogant we cannot be harsh with the non-believers. Here is Musa, the messenger of Allah, and in front of him Fir'aun. Allah says, فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلًا لَيِّنًا and say you both to him a mildly speech, a soft speech, قَوْلًا لَيِّنًا لَعَلَّهُ maybe he will take an admonition Maybe he will or maybe he will remember. This is the same word which we talked about uh, in the ayah number 42. Allah said, Wala taniya fi dhikri. Do not slacken in my remembrance. Remembering. We know the truth. The truth is inside ourselves. When we follow the evidence, the proof, they shall take us to that truth. And when we see that truth, we shall remember it. We shall not learn it for the first time. We shall remember it. We shall find that truth in ourselves. We shall say, yes, this is the truth. And this what I found in myself. Believing in one God is already found in ourselves, in our souls. We are the production of the only one God. So we know this reality in our nature. We know this reality. When we follow the truth, when we use our mind, when we reason, we shall find the truth and whenever we find a truth we shall not learn it for the first time we shall remember it remembering Allah says speak to him mildly so he shall remember maybe he shall remember you have to have that hope sincerely what some people say is I don't have any hope about him so I spoke harshly with him because he will not believe he will never believe so I said him so and so you are not God you are not judge Allah is the judge you cannot judge about them you cannot say they will not they will never believe you cannot know that. Allah is the one who knows the unseen. You cannot know the unseen. We cannot know the unseen. This knowledge belongs to Him alone. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمنين. ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا. 
ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته